Morning guys, thanks for joining us out here at the Cheney Ranch for the launch of the 2019 Honda CRF 450R and the CRF 450R Works Edition. Uh, two brand new bikes this year. The stock one, if you just glanced at it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think there's too many changes, but they've actually done quite a few things to really try to improve this bike from what they had last year. And then they've gone to a whole nother step for this uh, Works Edition bike, kind of following in the footsteps of, of the factory edition over at KTM but uh, with a little bit different concept. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, starting with the 2019 CRF 450R, all new frame. The down spars where they come down before sort of jutted back forward, these are more straight down. Say they were working on just optimizing the rigidity, uh, focusing on getting better traction and allowing the thing to turn a little bit better. We'll see if we can feel those changes today. Uh, they've coupled that with a different, uh, different swing arm Again, it's just rigidity and flex, kind of focusing on some of those characteristics and the way the bike feels. <clears throat> They've gone to uh, fat bar, Renthal fat bar, rather than the, uh, the old 7 8 bar. Uh, this is great news if you're somebody that crashes a lot because these things don't bend nearly as easily. Um, not quite as much flex, so you're going to have more of a firm feeling with these, but um, we know these to be a great bar. I've been using these for a long, long time. Uh, they do come with a black uh, DID rim this year, which is great news. I think a lot of Honda people are going to be stoked. There's been a lot of complaints about that in the past. New shock and fork settings. They're using a, a different oil that's a little bit um, different viscosity, it's supposed to reduce friction a little bit better. So anxious to see if we can feel that in the fork. But just really updated settings in the fork and shock. And this stuff worked great last year, so I uh, anticipate it to, to be good again this year. <clears throat> they also focused on some of the front brake using uh, different diameter pistons, uh, all new brake line, different rotors. So really trying to increase that power and feel in the front end. So anxious to see again, if I can feel a change from last year. And we're gonna actually start on a 2018 today, then jump to the stock 19, and then bump over to the factory or the works edition here, uh, just to see if I can differentiate between all three of those bikes. Uh, different cases on this bike as well. Uh, they basically got rid of where the Kickstarter plugged in uh, and last year's bike you could see that still sitting in the case with a plug in it that's all been shaved off this year it's all new case and it also on the left side rather allows them to uh, add in a, a shift sensor so there's actually a map for each gear on this bike now instead of having one map that overlaid over all your gears uh, now each each gear has its own map and they can do that through that sensor they've got on the shifter so anxious to see how that goes again different head pipe on this um, Again, aimed at just more, more power and improved delivery. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what we can get with there and um, see what the, that feels like. Different foot pegs, these are meant to clear mud a little bit better, give you a better platform. So a lot of changes overall on this bike. Dunlop MX-33 tires coming new on that as well. Uh, when you look over now at the Works Edition, <clears throat> rather than come out with something new as far as development, Honda focused on just taking the stock bike and bolting on better parts. So this fork is essentially this same exact fork, which is kind of a Showa A-Kit copy or similar. And uh, they just added better coatings to the internals and externals. So you get the Thai nitrate, you know, the Kashima coating on the top. So they got that different coloring. Uh, the triple clamps, it's a stock triple clamp, just anodized black so that it looks a little sharper. You get the HRC graphics. It's the same black DID rim, but it's a, a higher level, so a little bit stronger rims. The uh, header is the same, but you get the Yoshimura uh, slip-on mufflers, which is actually a really nice feature. Uh, a lot of times, I don't think the header is even necessary on these bikes, but it's cool to have a nice looking, nice sounding, and a lighter muffler you can slip on. Uh, you get the same pegs. You, this comes with a gold chain, um, and it comes with a gripper seat from Throttle Jockey, so uh, those are kind of the basic changes in this bike. The, the valving and the suspension is a little bit more aggressive, so that is a little bit different, but it's essentially the same fork design. Um, also have different maps. On both bikes you have different maps, so <clears throat> the three maps you have here, you actually, all of them are, there's a, another higher level here, another more aggressive map that you can get to on the Works Edition. So this is really designed towards somebody who's racing more, uh, a little, wants a little bit more aggressive settings. Both bikes also have new launch control settings, so different maps there. You have an aggressive, a dry, slick, and a muddy uh, launch device map. So we'll run through all those today and see how those feel. And uh, we'll get this thing on the track, 
all three bikes actually, the 18, the 19, and the Works Edition, and give you some good feedback on the differences between the three. I started my day off today on the 2018 model and just to get a feel for that and stock trim again jumped right on the 19 and uh, initially the first thing that I felt was a much quicker sharper throttle response it almost feels like going back to a carbureted bike versus EFI when it initially came out it, it's it's that much of a change just really sharp feeling uh, as soon as you touch it it's going it's, it's nice and it's not abrupt, but it's going immediately. And then the pull from that initial throttle response well into the meat of the power in the middle is, is improved in my opinion. That's how I felt on the track today versus the 18. Uh, the chassis on the 2019 CRF 450R is um, a little tough for me to tell. We didn't have, it's a private ride day today here at Cheney. So we didn't have a whole bunch of bumps. You get a little bit of chatter and some chop here and there. And it feels fine, it feels great. Uh, we, we made a couple of changes, just softened up uh, low speed compression on the shock, opened high speed up a quarter turn, set the sag at 107 on the back, tightened up the rebound, I went in two clicks. Feels a little bit uh, quick initially on that rebound, you might feel that. And then the fork I just softened up too as well and uh, left the rebound alone. And just with those changes I got, I got comfortable, the bike was balanced. But as far as the changes to the frame, it was tough for me to tell today. The bike drops into berms and ruts and, and, and runs through corners real nicely, no issues there. I didn't have any problems with it, but in order to really break it down versus last year's frame, I'm gonna have to get some more time on it, just to be real honest with you. So we're, we'll do a dialed in on that bike. There's definitely enough change that uh, we'll come back and, and do one of those with that bike here soon. Um, ran through all the, the maps, and we're at about 4,000 feet here today, so at Cheney, I actually like the aggressive map on, on both bikes, uh, map three. Just uh, there's some deep berms where you really want it to hit hard and kind of and pull hard. And then we're at elevation anyway, so uh, kind of the better you can get that, that uh, acceleration response feels better. Uh, so that's something that I think is going to be very track dependent. <clears throat> but here I like the aggressive map. Uh, tires are great. The front brake, you notice it is noticeably stronger than what they've had in the past. And again, they went to uh, different size pistons, one on the outside a little bit, one's a 27, one's like a 30 or 31. And uh, it's kind of road racing technology that they, they adopted and put onto here, a whole new brake line and, it, and rotor, and it just uh, translates into a, a, lot, a lot more powerful feel, which is nice. Uh, the tires were great, like I said. I didn't really notice much on the new foot pegs. They felt fine, uh, but I didn't, there was nothing there that stood out to me. Um, so all in all, great bike. It's down 1.8 1, 1 pounds from last year. And they did that. One of the things I didn't mention early on is all of the six mil bolts, uh, they're all, they've added hollow to all of those in an effort to lose some weight. And just all around, like I said, the bike is down almost two pounds, which is great. And um, handling was good. Like I said, all around, I was a really big fan of the 17. I feel like the 18 got a little firmer in terms of suspension, and then with 19, I feel like they've gone even further that way. So for me, the 17 was sprung and set up really, really great. It was a little too stiff in 18, and then now I think it's gone even a little more stiff. Again, that's just hitting a target audience. This is probably closer to 190, 
is what they're shooting for. And at 172, I'm just a little bit light for it. But uh, still, still works fine. Um, I would just maybe get into some lighter shock springs and fork springs if I move forward and set it up. Uh, as far as getting over to the works edition here, uh, the look of it is really cool, obviously. Um, I didn't know it's got this hand, hand ported head, the Yoshimira slip ons, different mapping that obviously goes with the head. And uh, I thought I would maybe feel a little bit more. It, it, it was very, very subtle, the differences. It actually is quieter than the stock bike. Um, but as far as horsepower, just to be real honest, I didn't, it wasn't, it didn't stand out to me. Um, still great, a lot of fun, maybe a little more over rev than the stock unit, but not a whole lot more front side that I noticed today. Uh, one thing I did notice about this suspension, it is set up a little more aggressively, the valving. So the harder I pushed this bike, the better it worked, which is typical of any kind of pro setting or, or kit suspension. It'll actually feel kind of rigid and firm until you start riding really hard and the harder you push it the better it works and i found that to be true here i did the same things i did on the on the stock bike opened up the compression a little bit slowed the rebound down in the back a little and ha had it balanced and working fine we tried uh, uh, dropping the forks down in the triple clamps a little bit uh, didn't like it went back to stock so uh, we, we played with a few things and again when we go into our dialed in We'll go through all that stuff in detail, but uh, truly it was just a couple of clicks to soften it for me and I, and I ran it. Ran through all the settings again. I like the aggressive map. Um, launch control works really well. If you're, uh, if you're racing one of these bikes, definitely play with that. Find the, the setting that's comfortable for you, one, two, or three. Um, tires are great on this thing. Brakes are great. <clears throat> I do like the seat. This is definitely a, a plus. Uh, you notice that you don't slide off the back when you're accelerating out of a turn or up a hill. So that was definitely something I liked. Uh, but a lot of this is just bling on this bike. It looks really cool. Uh, the coatings on the fork are, are sweet looking. Um, so, yeah, I don't think you can really go wrong. It just kind of depends what your budget is and what you're looking for on the bike. These are both, both of these bikes, the Works Edition and the stock 2019 CRF450R are available in dealerships right now so check them out at your local honda dealer and stay tuned we will have dialed in videos uh, for these for anybody picking up a 2019 honda thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one all right so just to give you a quick tutorial here on how the launch control works is this is a little bit different than your maps you want to make sure the bike is running, it's idling, and you need to pull the clutch in and hit the start button again. I know it's going to seem a little counterintuitive, but you hit the start button and hold it for three seconds. And on the left hand side next to your thumb here, you're going to see a purple light and it's going to flash once the first time you hit it. It'll twice blink twice the second time you hold it and three times the third time you hold it. Those three map settings are one, two and three, one being aggressive two being dry slick conditions and three being muddy conditions. So they actually get softer as they go, which is the exact opposite of the ignition mapping. So just keep that in mind when you're playing with this. It is a great feature and it is very functional. Just make sure you know which map is which. Got it?